there everybody and welcome to another day here at Adventures with Sarah. Very exciting day because after oh more than 18 months I'm going back to work which I can't even believe it and I'm still theoretically not going to believe it until I actually get there but I have a very challenging thing coming up because my tra my travels are going to take me to some pretty extreme weather. First of all I'm going to be going to Italy. Now in Venice it's going to be probably 80 to 85 with high humidity. Then I'll be in Sicily, which can get up to over 90 degrees at this time of year. I'm gonna need a swimsuit because we're gonna be swimming. Um, we're gonna be taking a boat excursion and swimming. I also need to have a towel for going to the beach and also for a swimming excursion. So that's all the summary stuff, right? But then at the end of Sicily, I am flying up to Iceland and I'm leading a tour of Iceland. So that's a completely different kind of climate. It's not just that it's cold. The high temperatures at this time of year in Iceland are 58 degrees, something like this. Uh, the low temperatures can be 35 to 40. The problem is wet and wind. So I'm used to those temperatures here in Seattle. We get those pretty regularly in the fall. But what we need to be prepared for is a more extreme feel of temperature. So how do you pack one bag with two completely different trips? Now, I asked a few of you uh, on a previous post what you thought, and the most common answer I got was pack two bags or pack one bag and FedEx it to Iceland. Now, that doesn't really fit in with my philosophy, but the bigger problem with that is that it's very expensive to ship a bag to Europe. And it's not just the expense, but you may potentially be liable for a custom or duty uh, charge of some kind it would probably cost a couple hundred bucks at least. That doesn't make any sense. So what we're gonna do instead is try to get everything in one bag and we've done it, I've done it. Uh, and a few things that I did that are different. First of all, I have been traveling for a few years with the Tombin TriStar and the Cotopaxi Alpha. They're more or less the same size, which is about 35, 37 liters, something like that. This is bigger and I decided to buy a new one for two reasons. One. Uh, this trip just requires a bigger bag. And number two, my my old coat epoxy alpha was the first generation and this rubbery surface flaked off and it looks really terrible and embarrassing now. And I felt a little bit like if I'm out guiding and I have a really horrible looking backpack on my back, it's a little bit embarrassing. So I thought it's time. I've been using that one for years. So I went and, and splashed out and bought myself this. It ran about $225. And I continue to love this bag for a couple of reasons. Number one, it doesn't have exterior pockets that are visible. And that means you can easily slide it in the overhead compartment and you can easily put it under your seat. Uh, it comes in three different sizes. So this is the big one, but they have a medium size one and a small size one that's like 28 liters if you have a smaller frame or you don't want to bring as much stuff. So just the fact that this more easily satisfies the requirements of the airlines puts this way ahead of almost any other backpack, which will have exterior pockets and all kinds of doodads on it. Uh, the simplicity of this is great. But what I also love about it is the functionality because we've got this zipper compartment here. This is where I keep my camera and my toiletries that I can just pull out. Uh, it's got a side zipper here, which is the pocket. Oops, no, that's not it, sorry, the blue one. That's the pocket for my laptop and it's got a little pocket here for my laptop charger. So it's very, very organized, but what I like more than anything about this bag is the fact that when you open it, you unzip it, I'll do it now, it lays flat, and you can open it like a big suitcase. Most backpacks don't have that, they just have one open compartment, but this one, because it has two sections like this, you can more easily see what you have. So let's go ahead and get started, and I will show you what I got into this bag. First of all, this bag was about Oh, I think altogether around 20 pounds, which is running a little on the heavy side for me, but that doesn't matter because I'm six foot two and more pounds than I'd like to admit, and I'm very strong. So can I lift this over my head? Yep, I sure can. I almost dropped it on myself, but yes, I can. I can lift it over my head, and that's the metric that's important because that means I can lift it into the overhead compartment. Also, it may be heavy, but it's got these waist belt straps that are really good and they reinforced it on this newer model. So it's quite comfortable actually, uh, this newer model than the older model was with less weight. So um, if you're looking for a backpack and you are gonna have more weight in it, this is a really important thing is just to make sure that the straps 
and the waist belt are really well done because that makes all the difference. You can carry a lot of weight on in a backpack if it's constructed really nicely. Okay, so let's see what I, what I did here. Uh, there's a lot more clothes in here than I probably need. First of all, somebody asked, what am I wearing on the plane? This may be it. I just got this uh, today and it is a merino wool t-shirt. And um, there's a brand called Icebreaker. This is like a knockoff of Icebreaker. Uh, and it is just 100% wool, super cozy and warm and soft. This will be my base layer, layer for uh, Iceland, but also I could theoretically wear this in Sicily. But that brings me to another point. The problem between Iceland and Italy is that Iceland, it's okay to look like you're going to a yoga class, right? Everybody's wearing Gore-Tex, it's like being in Seattle. Can't really, I mean, you can dress like that in Italy. I just don't because that's not really how Italians dress. So it's not just we have a temperature problem, but we also have a style problem on top of it. So I think I've cracked the code, but let's just wait and see. So first of all, this is my shirt compartment. So this has in it, uh, on the top, all of the shirts that I'm bringing. And you're, it's gonna look like a lot, but again, it's, it's because we are gonna be layering and we are going to be uh, in multiple kinds of temperatures. So, in here I've got silk tank top, another reversible silk tank top. Actually, I'll show you guys this one. This one I bought in Thailand at the silk factory that we visit. Um, it can be black or it can be turquoise. It's very pretty. But silk is amazing because it doesn't weigh anything. This weighs about half of what a normal tank top that's cotton would weigh. And it's super duper warm. So this will look really pretty with a pair of nice slacks in Italy, but it will also be a thermal layer underneath everything I'm wearing in Iceland. I've got a couple of white cotton short sleeve tops. This top I really like because it is a button down. Um, button downs, again, are really nice because you can layer them. Uh, it's short sleeve, but you can wear them in several different ways. I have an extremely lightweight three quarter sleeve top. I've got an athletic kind of t-shirt that is really super light. So as you can see, all of this stuff is super light, but for the most part, it's all silk. This is silk, this is silk, this is silk, this is an ultra light material. This actually, I'll show you, got this from Athleta. If you shop at Athleta, they have this really interesting fabric that is like featherweight. Uh, I have a white tank top I've worn quite a lot in the last couple of years made with the same thing. It's just a polyester, but it weighs absolutely nothing. So it's just a little short kind of crop top. I'll wear a tank top underneath that. So this will be good for both Sicily and Italy and Iceland. It can kind of work for all those things. Now, for those of you that haven't watched my packing talks before, uh, you might notice that I have a particular way that I store my shirts, and that is to roll them because almost all of the shirts I bring are knits. So I fold them in, quart in quarters, basically. So half, half again, and then I roll. And the reason I roll like this is that it helps to keep them organized, but also it keeps them from getting too wrinkled. So that's my top cabinet. And actually, I mean, look at all the things I've got in here. I've got one, two, Mm, three, four, five sleeveless tops, two long sleeve, and two short sleeve. So, a lot. And then, in the bottom of this particular packing cube, this is a special one from Tom Ben that I really love. It was meant to be that you put your clean clothes on top, and then you flip it over, and the bottom compartment is where you put your dirty clothes. That's not how I've ever used this cube. This is the sweater compartment. So when I open this up, I've got two extremely lightweight cashmere sweaters. These are old as the hills, by the way. And what I wanted to tell you about these is that if your cashmere sweaters get little holes in them, which inevitably they will, never fear, you can fix them. Both of these sweaters got holes in them and both of them shrank accidentally in the wash. I spent about four hours yesterday re rehabilitating both of these uh, cashmere sweaters. You can darn the holes. It doesn't look perfect, but it's not terrible and it, it's good enough. And what's really nice is it saved this sweater. I stretched it and actually I put this, put this sweater on a dress form to be able to dry. Uh, and when it came out, it was exactly the right size. And all the holes, like I said, they're not artfully fixed, but they're fixed. And cashmere is one of my top tips for packing because it's so, so lightweight. So I wanted to have at least two different cashmere sweaters uh, for the trip to Iceland. But these can also be used in Italy as well because they're nice and and pretty looking and very simple. Um, so that is my strategy for tops. What's a, uh, what's a good material uh, for 
uh, such varying temperatures? What's a good material? So that is a great question. Uh, I recommend thinking first of all about silk and cashmere. Silk and cashmere can be both light and comfortable in like summertime weather and extra warm in wintertime weather. weather. They're very strange that way. The other thing is uh, wool can also be the same way. Like that's why I'm trying this shirt out. Uh, it can, it's supposed to be warm in the winter but cool in the summer and they say that these wool knits like this uh, actually don't stink either. So, I mean, so far, but I, I don't know. We'll see what happens when I'm in heat if it gets stinky or not. What you're supposed to do is not wash these too aggressively because the oils from your body are supposed to get into the fibers and that will keep it to be antibacterial, I guess. I'm not 100% sure, but that's the theory on it. Okay, so that's my tops box there and my tops cube. Now this is the more tricky part of the bag. This one here is the, the compartment I do all of my folding stuff in, but in this particular version of the bag, I wasn't sure where to put my shoes. This looks like the perfect place to put shoes, but actually this is quite shallow. So instead, I put into this container here my uh, cube with all of my underwear, socks, bathing suit, all of that kind of stuff. So all of my underclothing goes in here. I have two sports bras, one wired like regular new, um, beige bra because that kind of goes under everything. And then my favorite underpants, which are all these ones that are incredibly, incredibly lightweight. This is a new one I got from Fruit of the Loom and they're basically made of this super lightweight mesh, very stretchy and weighs almost nothing. I think you can get these at Target or Amazon. Uh, they're very good travel companions, but of course the best underwear ever are my favorites, which are called On Gossamer, which are somewhere buried in here, but they're fantastic. So um, yeah, there we go. These are my favorites of all time. So it's almost a completely sheer kind of underpants. You can find these at Nordstrom, uh, but again, the cheaper ones you can find at Target, it's a similar thing, but maybe not quite as good. Uh, so let's get that all packed up. Ooh. One other um, little tip, I wash everything in OxyClean before I leave because it has odor reducing uh, powers to it. Luca, do you have a question? Um, I have a comment from uh, somebody in the uh, comment section, David Weigers. He says, I have to wear a heavy full leg compression stocking and I find that I get so hot. Shorts are not my thing, so I'm looking for pants that would be lightweight as well as washable and dryable overnight. Ah, good question. We'll get there in just a second. Okay, so as far as uh, other things go in my bag, you guys know I love my pillow. So my pillow is in the bag. I am bringing this with me. It did fit. Oh, it's fresh out of the wash and it's fluffy. That's the only problem is it came out of the wash and it's fluffy, but I put it in the bag overnight and it is starting to squish down, but down pillows are where it's at because they can squish down to almost nothing. Shoes, which uh, you guys will be a little shocked at me, but I have four pairs of shoes. So these are three in here. And then the ones I'm gonna wear on the plane are all birds mizzles, which uh, maybe we'll grab in a few minutes and show you. Um, but for the main trip, I'm bringing these wonderful shoes. They're Easy Spirits, which I'm a big fan of Easy Spirits now. They were not very expensive and they have them in a wide range of sizes. I wear a 12 and it's really hard to find shoes. So I'm very happy with these. These are a new style. Uh, I love them because they have the sole of a running shoe. Um, this is the best kind of sandal you can get. One that has the sole of a running shoe, arch support, and also has a very nice cushy footbed. So this has all the ingredients, plus the other ingredient that these have that I think are, is great. They're adjustable on the heel and they're adjustable on the top. So multiply adjustable. So this is a, an excellent, excellent choice for a walking sandal. Then my very favorite pair of shoes of all time for travel. These are uh, the Tila Mush Wedges, Ola, I think they call them. 25 bucks, best travel shoe on earth. They don't weigh anything. You can swim with them on. You can use them everywhere. You can, if you're taking a shower and you don't like the way the shower looks, you can wear them in the shower, but they're just so comfortable. And what's cute about them, they are a wedge like this. So you can get away with wearing these with a dress and it looks like you're wearing heels. So tricky. And the funny thing is, I've always been a big fan of these and you've heard me talk about them before. I met somebody in Lisbon that felt the same way, that had loved these with a passion for travel. Unfortunately, they're only making them in black now. They used to make them in interesting patterns. If you wanna get them, get them soon because I think they might be discontinuing them, but they are the best uh, flip-flop style, but they don't actually feel like a flip-flop. So I love these. I can't leave home without them. 
And then, as an alternate, because in Iceland I have the Albergs, which are wool, they're merino wool runners. They're great, and they're waterproof, and they're fine, but your feet get really tired, and it's always smart to have another pair of shoes just in case you get blisters or your feet just can't stand whatever pair of shoes you brought. So this is my alternate for, uh, I can use it in Italy as well, but, but especially for Iceland. These are Toms, they're wool, and they have a fleece lining, and the sole is not great to be honest, but they weigh absolutely nothing. I mean, these weigh, these together weigh the same as one of these shoes. And this is a very light sandal actually. So they're incredibly light. Toms I've always kind of liked because they are so lightweight, but the sole sucks is the only thing. So you don't want to be wearing these in the rain and you don't want to be wearing them on any slippery surfaces, but they're a comfortable alternative, almost like a slipper, if you can't stand the shoes you are wearing regularly. All right, so that takes us to the main uh, event here. Um, somebody did ask about compression socks. I do have compression socks. These are, um, oh, what are they called? Sockwell, and they're wool compression socks. And I'm gonna wear these underneath my clothes when I am in, um, in Iceland, as well as on the plane when I leave on Tuesday, I'll be wearing these socks because they're warm and they're compression. Okay, so inside the bag, we've got one dress, just a simple black dress. I have decided that Prana dresses are the best travel dresses. I have tried about six or seven different brands. This for me is the best brand. Uh, it's like a yoga company, P-R-A-N-A. -A. Uh, you can get their stuff on Amazon, you can get stuff directly from them, and REI also carries their clothes. What's great about them is that they're comfy, soft, stretchy, pockets. There's actually pockets, and I know that men watching this are like, what's the deal with pockets? Women's clothes don't have pockets, and it kills us. We hate it. These have pockets. This is a great dress because it just cinches around the waist. It's got not just a pocket, it's also got a hidden zipper pocket big enough for my phone, which is just magnificent. So this is a brand new find, but I have about three other Prana dresses that you've probably seen me wear when I was in Portugal and when I was in Sicily last year. Um, so same brand. Love them. They're fantastic just look for ones with pockets. Then we've got our pants. I've got my Eileen Fisher uh, silk joggers. You guys have seen these for a bazillion years now. Still my favorite travel pants because they're super lightweight, always look cute, and can be worn in dressed up or dressed down situations. Uh, my Eileen Fisher uh, linen pants, which I was a little on the fence about just because linen is a little heavier than I'd like, but they are very comfortable and they look really nice especially in you know locations that are very sunny these really work well i wish they were a tad shorter because these are just a little bit too long and i would prefer that they were more of a capri length but it's fine both of these kinds of pants i can layer with leggings so i can wear these in iceland as well which is kind of my intention with this is that i will put a pair of um, tights underneath them either tights or leggings and then i can wear them in both places now somebody asked about super lightweight pants this is an Amazon find, which I'm always a little suspicious of because some of the Amazon brands are things I've never heard of and you think, oh, that can't be good. Uh, but these are water resistant pants. They were not very expensive. The brand is Bayleaf, B-A-L-E-A-F. And they weigh absolutely nothing. They're just polyester. They've got a little zipper here. They've got toggles on the bottom. I don't know that I own a pair of pants this light. <laughs> they weigh almost nothing. They're a little bit loose. I got extra larges because I want to be able to put them over the top of my leggings, but these are a great find and they actually look nice on. I was pretty surprised. I actually would wear these even in Italy, even though they're a little more technical than I would typically wear. They are nice enough looking. So the color makes a difference too. I think that this gray is a color that can kind of go with a lot of different things. Now, a, a little questionable choice. I am bringing jeans, which I know are not great uh, for wet environments, but they're comfortable and I know that I'll use them and I'll probably wear them more than the other pants. So uh, I'm, a little, I'm gonna rethink them. I'm gonna try these on after we're done with this little video today and just make sure that I'm committed to these because honestly, this is probably enough pairs of pants. This plus a nice pair of um, yoga leggings is probably enough. Uh, so we'll think about this because that is quite a lot of weight but I always say if you love your jeans, take your jeans because if you're going to wear them all the time, it's worth uh, slogging them around with you everywhere. The other problem for me is that a lot of people would say, oh, don't bring them. And if you want jeans, just buy them when you're there. I can't really do that. I am six foot two. They do not make women's jeans 
in my size and length anywhere but here. So Unless you go to the Netherlands. <laughs> Unless I go to the Netherlands. Maybe maybe Icelandic people are tall. I don't know. Bjork is not tall. So no. I'm going to say no. That's why I may put these in the bag because I might regret not bringing them uh, because I do like wearing jeans when it's cold outside. So that's a to be decided. Then um, in here we have my skirt. This is my favorite travel skirt. You've probably seen on me a million times. This I got from ThreadUp, which is a used clothing website. It's Royal Robins, excellent brand to look on ThreadUp for. You can still buy their stuff new, but they are really, I think they're one of the best travel clothing brands. Uh, they make some absolutely beautiful things that are just very functional as well. So uh, this skirt will be going because it's extremely useful and it could be layered with leggings even if I wanted to wear it in Iceland. And then the last big thing, if I'm going to Iceland, I looked at all kinds of different jackets thinking, oh, I'll just buy something new. I'll get a, a lightweight hooded jacket. I just, I need something that's waterproof. I went through all these machinations looking at North Face and Eddie Bauer trying to decide what to do. And then I realized, you know what? I should just bring my regular winter coat from home. So this coat I, I bought some years ago. I did write an article about this on my blog some years ago when I went and did a huge comparison of uh, coats. This one, hands down, it was the best coat I tried on. It's by Arcturix and it is a parka. So it could be overkill for Iceland, but I don't think it's going to be. So it's got the hood and it comes down to about mid thigh and I just love it. It fits me really well. The other thing is if I want to wear this on the plane, it's like wearing a sleeping bag on the plane because it's like a cocoon. So I may even just wear this on the plane rather than keeping it in my pack. I put it in my pack last night just to find out actually if it would fit. Luca, do you have a question? Uh, what, uh, Anne Kiowan asks, what brand are the skirts? Uh, Royal Robins uh, is this, and then Prana is the dress manufacturer that I really like. And then this one is Arcturix. As I said, this is kind of a strange brand. You can get it at REI. Um, I think that's where they carry it. This is a couple years old, but I, I love it. So I just think that, that in the end, one of the things I came to as I was thinking about all of the different kinds of clothing I needed, I thought, well, maybe I'll just go buy this and then I'll just go buy that. And then I'll just go buy this. And I thought, I can't afford to buy a whole bunch of new stuff. Why don't I just go through my clothes, fix the things that have holes or things that maybe aren't perfect and make them work for this trip. And that's basically what I've done. I have almost nothing new, just these pants and this shirt. That, those are the only things that I purchased that are new uh, for this trip. So that's what I've got going on there. It all fits. It was under 20 pounds. Uh, and I might even make it a little bit lighter because there are things now that I've gone through with you guys that I'm looking at going, hmm, I don't know. Uh, and then in this outer compartment here, I've got my camera and somebody had asked what kind of camera I'm bringing. This is my vlogging camera because I am trying to take some videos that we're going to later process and put up as sort of like episodes of Adventures with Sarah. So I wanted to get some new shots of uh, Italy and of Iceland. It's uh, the Z Sony ZV-1. It is a magnificent camera. It's pretty light actually and I have a telephoto lens that I can screw on the top of it. So uh, I typically wouldn't bring this with me because my phone takes beautiful pictures and I really don't think that photography is always about the equipment. It's often just about being able to get a good shot, but we might see the Aurora Borealis. And I thought, if I'm gonna go and have a chance of taking a picture of the Aurora Borealis, I am bringing this extra camera because when in your life do you ever have a chance like that? So we are gonna do that. I'm gonna bring the, the heavy big camera because sometimes it depends on your situation. Sometimes it's worth it. And then my, toiletries kit, which I know looks absurdly small, but just a few of the little things in here that you guys have seen before, but just to kind of remind you, um, I've got my pills in here. I've got, this is deodorant. It's a kind of long lasting paste deodorant. Uh, I've got, actually somebody um, who is follows me gave me a bunch of stuff from this company called Thrive Cosmetics. And I really liked that, so I went ahead and I bought a bunch of things from them. Um, just refreshed my makeup uh, cabinet because it was I had a lot of old stuff. Look how tiny my shampoo and conditioner are, though. I'm bringing practically none. And the reason I'm bringing practically, practically none is that almost every hotel has shampoo and conditioner. And if it doesn't, there are grocery stores everywhere. You can go to the grocery store and buy yourself some shampoo and conditioner if you need it. So I don't see the point in bringing big ones anymore. It just seems like a lot of weight and waste. So 
That's why I'm going to skip that. Luca, do you have a question? Um, Sharon Peterson asks, uh, do you have any kind of light jacket or cardigan sweater for Italy in the evening? That is a great question. Ugh. So, a couple of things. What am I going to wear on the plane? Uh, so, I have an Eileen Fisher dress, which weighs nothing, which is going to be layered with some leggings, and then this incredibly lightweight jacket. Now, this is a funny jacket, actually. This jacket has a little bit of a funny story. Uh, it's from Ex Officio. Yes, ex officio. I got this jacket because last year when I was leaving for Sicily and I was live streaming with you guys from SeaTac Airport, I realized I'd left my fleece in my dad's car. And I was kind of beside myself because I had no jacket for the flight. So in the middle of that, somebody who follows me sent me a lovely message saying, here, I'm going to PayPal you some money. Go buy yourself a jacket. So I did. I went and bought this at ex officio. I would never choose something like this, but I actually love it. It's very, very lightweight. Uh, white is a terrible color to travel with, but somehow it made it through that whole trip without any problems. Also, it has some sort of like insect repellent in the fabric, which seems like a little bit like witchcraft to me, but I'm okay with that if it because I am a mosquito magnet. So this is going to be my lightweight jacket from uh, Ex Officio, and it's fine. So on the plane, I'm going to wear this dress, leggings underneath, the compression stockings, and then a scarf. And I decided, I always bring a scarf, of course. This time I decided to go for the least interesting scarf I own because it is the warmest. It's a big one. And on the plane, I can just wrap it around me and I can use it in Iceland as well. And the thing is when you're in Italy, now I have two options. I can either wear this little lightweight jacket or I can just use this heavier weight scarf like a jacket, which I will show you real quick which can just be like so. You just wrap it around you like a, like a jacket, right? you know? And that for me actually works in the summertime for Italy just to bring a heavyweight scarf. Especially if you had a cashmere scarf, this would be a fantastic solution, um, an alternative to a jacket. Look up. Um, Mila Sue Wisecover asks, how much does the packed bag weigh? The packed bag weighs, uh, I haven't got an exact weight yet, but uh, it weighs around 18, 19 pounds, which is heavier than I would normally take. But that is obvious because I have a lot of interesting different things going on. Oh, and uh, Marie Brown also asks, uh, what is the brand of the deodorant? The brand of the deodorant, I don't know, but everybody is telling me about this Lume or Loom deodorant. Everybody's crazy about that right now. So if you want to try one, that's the one. This one I got in a pharmacy in London like two years ago. Couldn't tell you where it came from. So. And uh, what, one more question. Yeah. Uh, Lori Ann asks, are you packing a scarf? Yes, this one. But uh, I will buy another one because I have a problem with scarves, as my children can attest that I, am, I have a scarf problem, don't I? little bit just, just a little just a little bit and actually wait what one more good one yeah. frey ottawa asks for first time travelers uh who want to bring back travel purchases what do you advise if you want to bring back travel purchases bring yourself a little fold-up bag now typically i do that on this trip i did not do that just because i have voluminous bags that i'll be able to fit stuff in but um, you can get little tiny foldable bags. Uh, there's a great one from Lewis and Clark. I think it's called like the ultralight, electrolyte packing duffel. So it's a duffel bag that's this big that packs down to something about the size of a tennis ball. So I would recommend that. There's lots of companies that make those ultralight packable bags. Um, so, all right, so a few other little new, new things, news in packing. Here's some news in packing. Uh, for years, I have struggled with trying to find the right toothbrush because I love my Sonicare. I have really bad teeth. I get cavities too easily. So I have to bring a quality toothbrush. Just I can't just bring a regular one. Uh, so I was for a while using the one called Quip from uh, Target. Uh, I like that one. The only thing is that it was kind of malfunctioning on my last trip and it was waking me up in the middle of the night because it was buzzing randomly like there was a ghost in my room. Uh, so I decided to go and look for something else. I had to replace it. And lo and behold, Sonicare finally produced a high quality toothbrush that is travel worthy. So there's two versions to this. 
This is the battery one where you put in a AAA battery. It says it lasts for three months on one AAA battery used every day. The other one, which I was going to get, but was about $20 more, um, is recharged with a USB, which is really cool. I thought about getting the USB one. The reason I didn't is that I already have too many things that need to be recharged with the USB. So I just don't want another one. But very excited about this, $28 at Target. And I think it's going to be worth the investment. I will let you know how I feel about it. I bought this obnoxious coral color for a reason because I won't forget it. <laughs> so it's really smart to buy things in obnoxious colors because then you don't forget them. Do you have a question, Lou? Um, somebody asked about the Box of Awesome. The Box of Awesome. Oh, we'll get there. Yes. All right. So what else is in here? I have an Iceland book, but I think I might actually shelve this and bring my Kindle instead because I can have multiple Iceland books if I choose. But I kind of got sucked into this one because of the beautiful, beautiful colors. Oh, look how beautiful. Oh my goodness. The photography is going to be spectacular. So my Iceland friends who are coming with me, I think we are going to have quite the buffet for the eyes. So this, you know, I wrote guidebooks for 20 years and I love my paper guidebooks, but I recognize they are not practical. They don't make any sense in the electronic age. So this is probably going to stay home and I'll bring my Kindle instead and load uh, either the moon guide or something else. I do recommend when you're looking at guidebooks, consider moon. They um, are a little bit more independent and I think the writing is higher quality. Um, so uh, I like this book to read it, but it will probably stay home. Uh, all right. And then I have in here some things that you probably aren't going to care about because it doesn't apply to you. Two giant bags full of audio systems. These weigh an absolute ton, but I'm super proud of myself because I got them into my packing cubes. So my audio system is now in these two containers and ready to go, which is fantastic. And if you want to know more about those audio systems, then be sure to schedule a tour. And it, it, do we have any new tours coming out? Do we... We've got so many new tours. We have 27 tours next year. Room on lots of the tours, by the way. So um, the stuff, if you guys want to travel with me next year, just an FYI, you better book soon because almost all the tours that I myself am leading are almost sold out to every destination from India to Peru to Rome to Provence. Like all the ones I'm leading are almost full. Um, but my delightful and wonderful colleagues will also be able to travel with you if you want to wait to sign up. Um, all right, so inside this bag, I always love the Tom Bin bags as my day bags. You guys have probably have seen the one with the... Um, the dragon on it that they don't even make anymore. I just love that bag so much. I decided to go with this one instead because it's called the Maker's Bag. It's lighter weight because it's made of this sort of super lightweight nylon that's really durable. Um, and it's roomier, so I could fit the audio systems in there. But it's got all the Tom Bin stuff that I love, like these little loops, this loopy system with the, the hooks. This is what makes these the best bags available. They're not cheap, they are expensive, but they are made in Seattle and they're just a fantastic company. So I really do suggest you consider supporting them because they are really top-notch brand. Uh, and this, uh, these bags will last forever. I have one that I've had almost 20 years, still ticking, works fine. Actually, Nico's using it as his book bag for school. But you can get things like this. I put this on here to put my hotel key to you know, hook it on. I've got in here another pouch that has my uh, electronic cords and charger. Here's just another little fun tip. If you travel in Europe a lot, instead of bringing adapters to your electronics, go and buy the European USB port. I got this from the Apple store in, uh, I think it was in Palermo a couple years ago. And so I don't have to bring all of the many, many adapters. So there you go. USB cord and USB charger. Uh, I have a pouch that's lashed in here that has my passport and my credit cards in. And then this one here, which is my main money pouch. So it's got two zippers, one container here with money and my headphones for the airplane. And then the front one uh, has my SIM card for my phone and it's got my uh, vaccination card in it. And of course, right now that's super duper important to have a vaccination card. And I'm just keeping it in there underneath some protective plastic so that it doesn't get messed up. Uh, so whatever you do, don't laminate your vaccination cards, but put them into some kind of clear container like this. I mean, this one would have been perfect too. Something that keeps it so that it won't get warped or wet when you're traveling. That's really, really important because this is your ticket to everything. It's your ticket onto the plane. It's your ticket into museums. 
all the things. You have to have your vaccination card with you. It's really important. Are they taking vaccination cards for uh, restaurants too these days? Depends on the country, but some of them, like when I was in Portugal, you had to have a vaccination card uh, just to eat or at a restaurant. So other little kind of miscellaneous things, I've got my little paint pad and paints. And just as a little aside for my Patreon members, I am gonna be painting postcards and I'm going to be randomly sending them to people who are Patreon members. So if you're a Patreon member, you may get a hand painted postcard from me at some point. Who knows? I, it'll be a surprise. I'm not gonna promise anything. It may be a surprise. But I've got my pens uh, and what else? Last but not least, always not, not least, is the Box of Awesome. Now, the Box of Awesome comes in multiple varieties, but those of you who've been following me for a long time know this is the thing that is closest to my heart because the Box of Awesome needs to be full of the things that will get you out of a jam. So what you have to do is go through and think about all of the potential little tiny things that might save you some headache. I've been combining the Boxes of Awesome into one. I think I might have tossed the other one in here. I did. All right. So. This is the original one. This is the upgraded one. So what's in here? We've got band-aids, shockingly orange band-aids. Uh, I like the flex fabric ones. I have a, a, just a square of tenacious tape. This is an interesting tape that can fix just about anything. It's got super sticky on it. So if you have a bag tear, uh, I used a little corner of it to fix a pair of glasses once. So this is a really nice product because it doesn't weigh anything, but it could get you out of a jam. Zip tie, which you never know when that could come in handy. I'm not sure what for, but lots of things. Uh, I got this from my dentist. This is a putty that when you combine the two packets, it can fuse a crown back into your face if you happen to have a crown that falls out. And I have gone through multiple packets of these with my tour members before. Crowns fall out. Uh, hydrocortisone cream, just a little bit, uh, because that is another thing that's very common. One of the most common tour member ailments is getting rashes on your legs from standing around too much. So hydrocortisone is one of the easiest things to bring in case you have that problem. Moleskin, there's a little sewing kit. Binder clip, which these are kind of fun. You can even bring a little bag of these. They come in very handy in a variety of ways. You can use them to clip your curtains together if your curtains aren't quite dark enough. You can use them to gather cables for your all of your like electronics together. Many, many, many uses for binder clips, so I throw one in here just, just in case. Uh, and then what else is in here? We've got uh, alcohol swabs, just the first aid stuff. Little tiny pouch. This is a fun little tip if you go to Macy's or Nordstrom or something, um, to go and ask them for a, a sample of skin cream with an SPF, because now I've got an emergency backup uh, suntan lotion for myself or for others. Also a little emergency backup thing, which I think is maybe next to you, you can get wipes that um, are insect repellent. I always carry a Benadryl. The Benadryl is super duper important because it has happened that people accidentally eat things they're not supposed to and they might die if you don't have a Benadryl on you. So I encourage everybody who's a traveler to have at least one or two Benadryl in your bag. I have saved three or four lives when somebody ate something that they were allergic to and they started to gasp for air. So this is really important. This is better than 911 in some ways. Uh, this is a funny little thing, and I don't even know where I got this from, but it's Velcro like this, right? So it sticks to itself. So you can lash together all of your cables uh, if you want, but I can think of a million other things this could be useful for if you need to kind of gather things or, or kind of stick things together. Nail file, I always take emery boards, cut them in half, put one in my bag. I have safety pins in here. Uh, and then Luca is, is going to like this one. I have what we call the centipedes. Ah, uh, the centipedes. <laughs> <laughs> I have centipedes. Now, this is something that we buy in Thailand, and it is for um, cough. It's like an anti-cough pill, but it's also one of these things you take if you have a sore throat or whatever. It's one of these weird homeopathic miracle cures. The other thing that I don't have in here yet, but I will, is tiger balm. If you've ever seen tiger balm before, uh, it's a Thai thing as well. It's a cream that is great for soreness. It's great for bug bites. It's like a cure-all. Actually, 
A, my friend from Thailand, she had me go get some because I had a hangover one day and she said it would make me feel better and it actually did. So there you go. Uh, Tiger Balm, you can even find that at Target of all places. I just saw it today. Um, so rubber bands, um, I have gauze, blister treatments, and then I think in this one, this is the old box of awesome. Oh, Valium, but don't put that into your bag. Um, what else is in here? Glue dots. Uh, and a tampon. I put this in here as a courtesy because you never know when somebody you're traveling with may need a tampon. Uh, and then also a little vial full of just kind of random medication. Pepto-Bismol tablets are the traveler's friend because those Pepto-Bismol tablets can really help if you've got traveler's diarrhea um, or a variety of other things. So this is just my random assortment of different things. Uh, also my jet lag cure is I bring Tylenol PM, which you can see the blue ones there and I take one of those right before I go to bed. Uh, and that always helps me get through jet lag for the first couple of days. Or a Benadryl. If you're a little snuffy, take a Benadryl before bed, does the same thing, knocks you out, and you'll be great the next day. And then the last little thing in here that I would recommend is getting one of these uh, eyeglasses fix-it kits. You can get these at most uh, travel stores or at Target or Walmart. Uh, and little tiny vials of crazy glue. Tiny, tiny vial of crazy glue. You never know when this comes in handy, but almost every trip that I go on, somebody uses one of these, maybe to glue their shoes back together or their bag or something like that. So that is the box of awesome. It is filled with awesomeness. There are currently two, just because I am kind of refreshing and revamping my box of awesome, but I'd love to hear what you guys have in your box of awesome. Luca, questions? Uh, I just uh, I just have a question of my own. Uh, what is the craziest like usage of the box of awesome that you think that you have done over the years? The craziest usage of the box of awesome. Uh, well, I've put I help people replace teeth and fillings. I've had fillings fall out, and I've had I used to have, and I don't have in this one, but you can get filling material at the at Walgreens, and I have brought that with me before, and I've filled people's teeth before. Um, Broken shoes, broken bags. Um, yeah, but I think helping somebody put their filling back in their tooth, that's a, that's a pretty unusual. <laughs> so I'm going to go with that. So I'm kind of, I, I consider myself to be an amateur doctor. So um, I think that's about it. Any other questions from people watching? Uh, let's see. Um, just give me a moment to scroll up. Sorry if the camera gets a bit shaky here. Um, oh, one other thing while he's waiting. Uh, just another little tip, new product find for women that have long hair. I, I just discovered this and apparently it's a thing that people younger than me know about. Rubber bands that look like this. I bought these today and apparently this is like a thing that young girls love these and now I understand why because they don't pull on your hair. It's like a rubber band that just holds your hair. It doesn't actually pull on your hair and it's amazing and I love them. And I just got them at Target and it's especially good for people that like kind of the messy bun look. But yeah, I put it in there and it doesn't give you a headache. They're supposed to be like the best ponytail holders for people that get headaches from ponytail holders. Uh, Linda, uh, I'm, I'm sorry if I butcher your name, Linda Beckstedt uh -huh. uh, asks, what is the model of the Tom Bin bag? The model of the Tom Bin bag is called the Maker bag, M-A-K-E-R. And one other thing I wanted to show you guys is just my... My shoes. Yes, the Allbirds. There was a question about those, if they right. were really waterproof. So, Allbirds. I have three pairs, four pairs of Allbirds now. Um, and I have mixed feelings about them. Um, I think that the original ones are super cozy and comfortable, um, and they're pretty lightweight. They make a decent shoe. I don't believe it when they say, though, that they're good for... Uh, the summertime because I took them once on a summer trip and they were terrible. My feet were so, so sweaty. So I wouldn't recommend Allbirds for summertime. I have the slip-ons, which I love, but they get too loose. I wore those in Egypt, looked really cute, but they do stretch out. The nice thing is you can wash them and they shrink. These are the mizzles. The mizzles are the ones that are supposed to be waterproof. Are they waterproof? No, <laughs> they're not waterproof, but they are water resistant. So they, the water kind of beads up and then it, um, it gets damp over time. It just doesn't get wet as quickly as a regular pair of shoes does. Uh, they are super soft because they're made of wool. You don't need to wear socks. And I don't actually wear socks with these, 
and usually I don't get blisters, but when I wore them this summer uh, and on a warm day and I walked Green Lake, I did end up getting a blister. So the socks thing is kind of up to you, but theoretically you shouldn't have to wear socks. Um, the other thing about these that is a little bit of a mm for me is that because they do have this antibacterial and anti-stinky material, you don't want to replace the insoles. You could, but the insoles have that wool on them. And what I don't like about that is that I really like having my own orthotics in my shoes because I like to have a little bit higher arch support. So those are just the drawbacks. The pluses are they aren't terribly heavy. Uh, this sole, which is obviously well used, is supposed to be anti-skid. So they're supposed to be very good for wet and uneven surfaces. And I, I find that to be true so far. And yeah, they're super cozy. They're very, very warm. And so this is why I chose them. Actually, um, Reed had suggested that the Iceland travelers bring waterproof hiking shoes. And I started looking at buying waterproof hiking shoes for this trip, $150 minimum for good waterproof hiking shoes. And then I just got thinking, well, wait a second, my Allbirds are supposed to be waterproof and non-skid, and I think they're fine. And I can also wear them running because I do like to go running when I'm traveling. So they, this was sort of the compromise. And I'm happy with it. I think it's gonna be fine. I do really like all birds. These are a little bit um, warmer and heavier than this, the typical ones though. So, so that's what I'm gonna bring. It's a very strange bag from my point of view but I have some things that are gonna look really nice. I mean, I've got some cute dresses, I've got technical pants, I mean, I've got all kinds of weird stuff in here, but once I actually laid them out and have a, had a look at what goes with what, I think it's gonna work. So that's how you do it, 20 pounds more or less for four weeks and completely different climates. So I hope that that made sense to you. Luca, any other questions? Um Gianna, yes, I'm, I, once again, sorry if you I butcher, uh, butcher your name, Gianna, Katanzariti uh -huh. uh, comments, can you comment on traveling right now? Can I comment on traveling right now? Absolutely. Especially internationally. Yeah. So uh, really, I don't think my advice or thoughts about traveling are any different than they were in May. You're still taking a risk by traveling. And I think everybody just needs to acknowledge that there is going to be a risk, even if you're vaccinated. Uh, I myself, to mitigate risk, I went and got a PCR test done, uh, which I just got back, of course, so I have that ready to go in case it's needed. I am not required to have a PCR test for travel to Italy. I got it anyway, though, and I highly recommend anybody doing international travel, no matter what your destination says, have a, a recent PCR test done within 72 hours of your departure, because you never, ever know and you don't want to get stuck. So that's my number one piece of advice. Um, number two, you know, the travel warnings from the State Department, I am skeptical about those. I think that you need to look at the whole picture of how a country is handling the COVID crisis. You can look uh, at their embassy websites. Uh, I think all the places that I'm going to are handling it pretty well. Italy is very, very careful for the most part, but I will say I am going to be wearing masks the entire time, which reminds me, in my arsenal of things, bring a paper mask, one of these N95 ones, have at least one of these in your bag, if not two, because some places require paper ones rather than fabric. I find the fabric ones more comfortable, um, so I will be wearing those as well, but have both. I'm gonna bring probably about three or four masks with me, also because you do wanna wash them like underpants. They are, that's another thing. Masks are like underpants. Like you've been breathing in it all day. Don't just put it on your nightstand and then wear it the next day. Wash it, because you, you know, it's like underpants for your face. I mean, I know it's gross, but it's true. Um, other things to think about when we're traveling, you know, the other concern that we're running into are curfews because right now I don't think anywhere is going to ban Americans, but what they are gonna do is to start ratcheting up the restrictions if things don't improve. So that means wearing masks all the time, which I'm actually gonna ask my groups to do that anyway. That's going to mean curfews, which means restaurants are gonna close early. In Portugal, the restaurants closed at 1030 and the Portuguese were losing their minds over it. And for me, I'm like already in bed at 1030. So <laughs> it's fine. Curfews are actually not that big a deal for people who are going out and not planning. I mean, if you're going to Mykonos and you're going to slobber all over somebody. Okay. So that's a different story. Uh, for me, I'm in bed by 1030. So the, the curfews don't really bother me at all. Those are the restrictions you're going to see. But the biggest change in travel right now is that if you are not vaccinated, do not attempt international travel. Do not. It's not worth it. 
It's going to be so much work. You, there are places you can go if you're unvaccinated, but that's not going to last long. Germany recently has said that only people that are vaccinated may travel there. But if you are unvaccinated and you go somewhere, it's going to be a world of pain because you're going to be taking PCR tests almost every day. It's going to be not worth your time and your effort. If you are vaccinated and you take precautions, you know, that's that's the camp I'm in. Uh, the bonus, what do, you, what do you get for the struggle of traveling right now? Well, things are very affordable right now. Airfare is very affordable. Hotels are very affordable. And also you get places mostly to yourself. Most cities that I'm gonna be visiting will have virtually no tourists. Venice will have tourists, of course, but it'll be less than it would normally have at this time of year by quite a lot. So that's a huge benefit that you get to see places very quiet. Uh, and then the biggest benefit of all is that people in my industry are really suffering, myself included. We haven't worked in 18 months to two years and it's economically disastrous for us because what are we gonna do? I mean, should I change my profession? It's hard. And so if you travel right now, people that you are giving your business to appreciate it more than you can even know. So the fact that I'm employing local guides, I'm employing restaurants, I'm employing hotels by bringing my groups there, that to me feels like important work. So uh, we need to get the world back in, up and running. We can't hide in our houses for the rest of forever. So if you are scrappy and you're ready to roll with the punches and kind of go Indiana Jones style, it's a great time to travel. If you are somebody who's timid and it's, you know, you'd be bothered by all of those things, it's not a great time for you to travel. And it, you know, it's time to wait. But having had a serious illness in the last few years, let me just say, we can't wait forever. I mean, you can, but it's very possible you won't ever go anywhere. So, you know, Every person needs to make an individual choice. I'm not gonna recommend for you one way or another, but that's my take is that life is short. We need to move on. We need to get this world moving again, right? Any other questions, Luca? I think that's a good note to end on. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining us, everybody. And I will be taking off on Tuesday. Uh, coming up this week on Adventures with Sarah, we're going to be visiting China with my friend Reed Cohen. And later in the week, we'll be visiting uh, Italy with me. Patreon friends, you are going to be treated to a walk around Venice. So look for an, uh, a post in Patreon later on tonight. Uh, on uh, Thursday, I believe it is, Thursday evening, I will take you for a walk and show you all of the best parts of Venice, according to me, uh, as just a little treat and, and a big thank you for uh, helping me out and keeping me sane and keeping the lights on for the past year. So. We'll see you again soon. Ciao, everybody.